Hello and welcome to Majesty Sussex Report. I'm Antonio and it's an absolute pleasure and honor to have you join us today on this podcast. And we will be doing a summary of the um, chapter five of uh, Omid Scobie's book, Endgame. So the, I'll do the summary and then just a brief little commentary. And that's what our podcast today is all about, folks. It's just been so busy um, that I wasn't able to actually, you know, post this earlier or get this completed earlier. Um, we've been wrapping up things at work. Um, today is my last day at work, um, off for the holidays. And, you know, when they say you're off for the holidays, uh, not really off for the holidays, because what I usually do is that I will... Get, try to catch up on all of the stuff or all of the work that that is you know that residual stuff that just keeps piling up that you need to do but but you you take forever to get it done so I'm going to be doing a lot of that um, getting caught up with all of that work so when I head back um, you know everything is finished and ready to go again so sorry I wasn't able to um, post this a lot earlier but doing it now, and I want to say just thank you to all of you for your um, patience. And um, I am also honored with your comments and um, the beautiful messages that you you um, leave. I want to give a big shout out to my second, hello, hello people, my second super sticker. So thank you. So big shout out to HJ Sid. Uh, so H. J S E D said, thank you so much. Um, and what an honor. I, I, thank you so much for supporting this um, little channel. And thank you for the super sticker. I absolutely appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. And as soon as I know if, if there's any other stuff, once um, YouTube unlocks it, I will let everyone else, I, I'll let everyone here know. Um, we... In order for them to unlock more stuff, I guess, not I guess, I know, we need to get to a thousand subscribers. So that's why I've been trying to push a little bit, um, get into a thousand subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. It costs absolutely nothing and you'll be helping the channel out. As I have said before, uh, this channel is not a place for you if you are new around here to come and write comments that are hateful, um, especially comments hateful towards the Sussexes. I'm not going to tolerate it. Also, if you leave in any comment in regard to um, trying to create some kind of some kind of argument or or or, or bring your own um, theories and. Uh, mentality to our space, I will delete you, okay? Well, not delete you, delete your comment. Um, and it's not needed here on this channel. We are very grounded in what we believe in. We don't need anyone else to come in and to teach us anything um, because um, we know what we know and what we know is based on facts, is based on truth. And... Um, you come in to prove something to us, we'll do absolutely nothing. You're not going to convince any of us of the way we believe or the things that we can see with our own, own eyes, right? So do yourself a favor, right? We release you from any obligation you think you've got in changing our minds, right? Again, we release you from that obligation, so no need. And thank you very much. I appreciate that. So, if you are new, again, around here, um, do check us out. Hopefully, you will like the content and you will subscribe. As I said before, um, press the thumbs button to say the content was, was okay, you liked it. And again, leave a comment as long as it's respectful and not anything hateful. And I wanted to do some quick shout-outs um, on top of the, um, the super sticker. I wanted to say to um, um, Annie Gore. Gorm Gormelli, I think. I think I'm going to say that correctly. If I'm not, my apologies, Anne or Annie. Um, your comment was, um, your work on these videos is absolutely stunning. I find them so meaningful and moving. Thank you. Um, let me tell you, <laughs> I am obsessed with them too. So 
I spend a lot of time um, putting them together. And it's actually the part of the podcast that takes the longest because I try to find them. Once I have a story in my head of how I, 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 I then I try to find the images that will match that, that storytelling. And with the intros, I know for some people, they're like, it's so long. And I get it. Um, I would recommend just, just fast forward. You don't need to watch the entire thing. But I try to tell a little mini story within um, the intros also. Um, it's my kind of artistic contribution <laughs> to um, the intros. And hopefully um, you continue to enjoy them. Thank you so much. Um, Connie Palmer um, says, uh, hello, Antonio. You are doing a marvelous job this is beautiful thank you no thank you connie i much appreciate it um matilda uh thank you antonio your artistic prowess is impressive uh, from start to finish um talk about miss opportunities harry and megan who are the real mccoy who would have given um the royal family local and global sustainability listen i i cannot agree more with you like i i say i when i see them doing things and i'm like gosh you you folks are such idiots your ego was so so big you couldn't see something good right in front of you that would have benefited you so much you you're, you're lazy you don't want to work you don't want to do all this other stuff you don't want to have this like genuine and authentic way but these two want to to these two it comes naturally so why not let let them do it? But no, you folks got jealous and all of that, and we all know what what ended up happening, right? So just 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 quickly again, just just to say, um, um, cruising cruising PC, hello and thank you, and um, uh, Bolas World, uh, Bolas World, hello, um, CK CKI um, CK Cal. You know, you folks should make fun of me for like mispronouncing all of this stuff. It's a hard to pronounce handles. Um, Irene, Irene G, um, thank you for joining, Irene. And um, quickly, 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 let me see here. Um, Angela Simmons, Simons, Angela, hello. Suzy Q, hello. Fate, Fate Manzini, hello. It's so great to see um, all of you folks continue to comment and continue to participate. You know how much I love it. I love um, read, reading this stuff and um, listening. Uh, sorry, read, read reading the things you have you have to say. Um, Be Beverly um, Hardy, thank you very much. And um, Joyce Anderson, thank you also. And uh, Essie, Essie, thank you. Um, Diana Flanders, thank you very much. Uh, Faith Mancini, thank you. Uh, Karen, thank you also. And um, Joanne Baker, thank you very much. S, thank you. Reba Henderson, salute and thank you. Um, Miss Farood, um, thank you. And Diana Owusu, thank you. Thank you very much for being one of our new subscribers. And with all that said, I know there's lots of stuff happening in, <laughs> in the Megan and Harry universe. Um, we had that excellent little commercial that they did, that Megan did. Um, and, you know, I heard that they're in Costa Rica enjoying some time off, well-deserved, with um, the prince and the princess. So, you know, good for them. And um, to all of you who are still sort of, uh, who celebrate Christmas and um, happy Hanukkah to those who celebrate Hanukkah and happy Kwanzaa to those who celebrate Kwanzaa and uh, people who are still out shopping, trying to get their last minute gifts in, good luck to all of you. And hope besides all of this, all of this craziness and all of that, um, you know, we, 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 we go back to, to the fun, foundations i would say of these this sort of uh, festive season and it, and it's and it's to be with with loved ones and to be in community and um 
let's let's keep an eye out and look out for those who, uh, you know, you haven't heard from in a while or that, um, you know, have had a tough year this year or people who are away from their families or someone who is alone and isolated for one reason or another. Um, that's it. Yeah. So, but all that um, being said, let's get it on. Chapter 5 Baggage The Lingering Trials of King Charles Chapter 5 in Omid Scobie's book Endgame delves into the evolving dynamics within the British royal family, particularly focusing on the transition of responsibilities from Queen Elizabeth II to Prince Charles due to her advanced age and health issues. Queen Elizabeth II's health and age. At 95, the Queen's energy and health limited her ability to attend all royal events and engagements. Her private secretary, Edward Young, and dresser Angela Kelly encouraged her to slow down. Transition of duties. Prince Charles, Prince William, and Princess Anne started taking over some of her responsibilities particularly those requiring extensive travel or physical exertion. For instance, Charles began laying wreath every Remembrance Day since 2017. Appointment of Andrew Parker as Lord Chamberlain In spring 2021, the Queen appointed Andrew Parker, a former British intelligence officer, as the new Lord Chamberlain to oversee the royal household. This appointment marked a strategic step in the transition to King Charles' era, indicating a cautious, diplomatic, and sensitive approach to the shift in responsibilities. Queen's Concerns About Prince Charles The Queen expressed some reservations about Charles' ability to handle the role, perceiving him as indecisive and temperamental. She saw Parker as a trusted figure to act as her new CEO of the firm. Historical Context of the Lord Chamberlain Role The role of Lord Chamberlain, historically ceremonial, became more active and particularly um, under David Ogligi, the 13th Earl of Arley who served from 1983 to 1997. He brought a business acumen to the monarchy, guiding it through challenging times. Regency Act, ev Evocation and Prince Charles' Role On May 10, 2022, the Regency Act was invoked due to the Queen's health, allowing Charles to perform the ceremonial duty of reciting the speech at the opening of the new parliament par parliamentary session. This was a significant moment for Charles, who had long sought validation within the royal institution. Prince Charles' performance at the state opening. Charles read the Queen's speech, but the ceremony was structured to emphasize the continuity of the monarchy rather than the spot that rather than spotlighting Charles as an individual. Prince William's presence alongside Charles highlighted the line of succession. Behind the scenes challenges. The planning of the state opening was chaotic, with last minute changes and lack of preparation. Time for Charles, reflecting some inefficiencies and and tensions within the royal operation. In this chapter also, Omed outlines Charles' financial scandals. Two major financial controversies involving Prince Charles. 
The first incident involves accepting three million pounds in cash from Sheikh Hamid bin Hassim bin Habar Al Hani of Qatar. The second scandal relates to Charles accepting one million pounds from half brothers of Osama bin Laden. Bark and Sheikh Shafiq. Despite no illegality or direct connection to terrorism, these actions raise significant questions about Charles' judgment. The palace response. The palace responded to these controversies by emphasizing that the donations were for charity and that Charles' actions were not unethical or illegal. However, the narrative portrays these responses as inadequate, highlighting a pattern of questionable decisions by Charles. Cash for Honor scandal? This chapter also touches upon a separate scandal involving Charles' foundation, where a Saudi tycoon was allegedly offered honors in exchange for donations. Michael Fawcett, Charles' former assistant valet and a key figure in his household, was implicated in this scandal. Michael Fawcett's role and resignation. Fawcett described as Charles' right-hand man, a fixer, resigned following the, following the scandal. His close relationship with Charles and his influence within the royal household are highlighted along with previous controversies involving Fawcett. Public Perception and Criticism The incidents and Charles' connection to them led to the public scrutiny and criticism, questioning his decision-making abilities. This scrutiny came at a time when Charles was beginning to assume more public um, responsibilities due to the Queen's decline in health. Contrast with Jubilee celebrations. The con uh, contrast the controversies with the national celebration of the Queen's Platinum Jubilee, suggesting a brief respite for the royal family before beginning overshadowed before before being overshadowed by these scandals. Prince Charles is painted as a figure embroiled in controversies, struggling with judgment in financial matters, and heavily reliant on aides who may not always act in the best interest of the royal reputation. The narrative implies that these controversies have tarnished the public image of Charles during the, a, a critical period of transition in the monarchy. Michael Fawcett, Controversial Role The narrative highlights Michael Fawcett's controversial tenure as Prince Charles' aide. Despite being found innocent of criminal offences in previous inquiry, Fawcett's action ca cast a shadow over the palace. His resignation and subsequent rehiring as a freelance consultant and later CEO of the Prince's Foundation underscores the indispensable yet problematic presence of Fawcett. Charles' ambitious Knockroom uh, project, a sustainable village development in Scotland, is portrayed as a disaster. The land acquired in 2007 with the purchase of Dumfries House was intended for a large-scale heritage-led regeneration. However, the project faced criticism for its impracticality and limited appeal, resulting in only 31 homes being built over a decade. The numerous financial scandals and questionable decisions by Prince Charles, including his dealings with the Saudi billionaire Mafu, the Harvard Schwam um, Group property transactions, and the lavish purchase of Dumfries Ho House, these actions led to public and internal scrutiny, raising questions about Charles' judgment and the management of his charities. 
The chapter continues to convey a sense of unease and criticism within the royal circle and among the public regarding Charles' financial decisions and the implications of his future role as king. His actions are contrasted with the queen's more cautious approach, leading to concerns about his suitability as a monarch. Charles' enduring connection with Fawcett, despite Fawcett no longer working officially um, for Charles, the narrative suggests their ongoing relationship and its potential implications for the monarchy. Prince Charles as a royal figure struggling with the balance between ambition and prudence. His endeavors, often well-intended, are marred by controversy and misjudgment, casting doubts on his pre preparedness or kingship. The narrative overscores the challenges and political pitfalls that accompany the transition of power within the British monarchy emphasizing the complexity of managing personal relationships and public responsibility. This chapter continues to examine various aspects of Prince Charles' character and actions, delving into his political uh, comments, private correspondence, and personal relationships. Political Comments and Controversies Charles' private criticism of the British government asylum policy an action that goes against the apolitical nature expected of royals. This incident raised questions about his ability to remain neutral or political matters as king. Speculations and Leaks There are suggestions that leaks about Charles' financial dealings could be from someone within the establishment. The timing of these leaks alongside his controversial comments, field rumors, and conspiracy theories. Correspondence with Meghan Markle. The narrative touches on private letters exchanged between Charles and Meghan, Duchess of Sussex, addressing her concerns about unconscious racial bias within the royal family. These letters, which were supposed to remain confidential, somehow made their way to the press, raising suspicion of internal leaks. Family, dis, um, f family dynamics and personal history. Charles' complex family dynamics are highlighted, particularly his relationship with his children and their families. The narrative also reflects on Charles' upbringing, describing him as a sensitive soul who later embraced his privileged position and social status. Camilla and Diana. The chapter briefly mentions Charles' relationship with Camilla and Diana Spencer, noting the impact of these relationships on his public image and personal life. Prince Charles as a complex figure caught between his deeply held beliefs and the expectations of his royal role. It reveals his struggles to balance personal options with the constitutional mandate of royal neutrality, as well as the challenges he faces in managing fam familial and public relationships. The narrative suggests that Charles' actions and decisions, both past and present, have contributed to a sense of uncertainty about his future as king. The narrative reflects on the complex relationship of Charles with Diana and Camilla. It portrays how the institution favored Diana as a suitable princess for public image, leading to Charles' internal conflict between duty and personal desire. The affair with Camilla and the stained marriage with Diana are highlighted as significant factors affecting Charles' reputation. Public Perception and Media Relationships The chapter discusses Charles' efforts to maintain a positive public image, particularly through his interactions with the media. It details how he strategically used media relationships to shape public opinion, 
especially during times of controversy, such as Harry and Meghan's departure from royal duties. Extravagant lifestyle and eccentricities. Charles' luxurious lifestyle and particular habits are described in detail, suggesting a disconnect from even other royals. His extravagant demands and preferences, such as a specific requirement for his clothing, shoes, and personal care, are mentioned as examples of his indulgence. One of those having his shoelaces pressed. Controversies and Criticism The chapter touches upon various controversies surrounding Charles, including his political interference, his financial dealings, and his past marital issues. These aspects contribute to a complex and often contentious public image. The narrative suggests that Charles' ascension to the throne is marred by his controversial past and the complicated dynamics within his family. His role in the royal family is portrayed as one fraught with challenges, both in terms of public perception and personal relationships. Prince Charles, as a royal figure whose life has been a balancing act between public duty and personal desires, his actions and decisions, often well intended, are overshadowed by controversies and criticism. The narrative underscores the complexities of Charles' role in the monarchy, highlighting the challenges he faces in maintaining the dignity and stability of the royal institution while dealing with his own personal issues and public image. And that, my friends, is the summary of Chapter 5 of Omid Scobie's Endgame. This chapter sort of highlights financial controversies, um, complex personal relationships, media manipulation and public image, um, luxurious lifestyle and eccentricities, uh, public uh, political comments and controversies, challenges as, um, as a future king that Charles will, um, well, not will have, that has. So next, uh, I'll do a little bit of a, a commentary, I guess. The chapter portrays of Prince Charles and the broader narrative of the royal family reflect the complexities and challenges faced by modern monarchies. In today's rapidly changing world, where traditional institutions are continuously scrutinized, the British monarchy finds itself at a crossroads. The British monarchy, through figures like Charles, is seen trying to adapt to the evolving demands of a modern, more transparent and socially conscious society. The controversies surrounding Charles highlight the delicate balance between maintaining royal traditions and adapting to contemporary expectations. The intense public scrutiny and the influence of media on the royal family's public image as demonstrated in Charles' interactions with the press, underscores the changing dynamics of monarchy in the age of information and social media. The chapter um, indirectly raises questions about the role of a constitutional monarchy in modern governance. Charles struggles with remaining a politically neutral um, person while having strong personal opinions reflect the inherent tension in a system where the monarchy is expected to be above politics. Despite controversies, the royal family continues to hold significant culture, cult, cult, cultural and uh, symbolic value. They're seen as custodians of history and tradition, playing a crucial role in national identity and uh, and and unity 
The exploration of Charles' personal life versus his public duties highlights the human aspect of royal figures, often overshadowed by their institutional roles. This humanization can lead to both empathy and criticism from the public. The narrative also opens a broader debate on the sustainability of monarchies in modern democratic societies. The balance between tradition and progress and the personal flaws and strengths of royal members continuously shape public perception for their relevance and effectiveness. In conclusion, Chapter 5 of Endgame and the story of Prince Charles within, within it serves as a microcosm of the broader challenges facing the British monarchy today. It portrays a royal institution at a pivotal point, striving to maintain, re um, maintain relevance and, as and, and respect in a world where its traditional role is constantly being re-evaluated. Oh, oh, oh.